Hello, Beginning Search family. I want to promote to you, and I'm excited to promote to you, our upcoming Doctrines service. It will be led by none other than one of our pastors, Pastor Danny Villa, an excellent preacher, teacher, and communicator of God's Word. Alam na po ninyo na napakahalaga na tayong lahat ay ma-establish ng matibay sa katuroan ng salita ng Panginoong Diyos. The Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. He says, all scripture is inspired by God or God breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting in righteousness so that, ano lang ang dahilan? So that the servant of God, tayong lahat po yan, will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Kailangan daw tayong ma-equip. Kailangan daw tayong maturuan. Kailangan tayong magkaroon ng mga kinakailangang mga tools para makapaglingkod tayo ng tama sa Panginoon Diyos. The Apostle Paul also tells the young Pastor Timothy, sabi niya, watch your life and your doctrine carefully so that you will save not just yourself but also your hearers. Bakit ba napakahalaga yun? Even at the time of the apostles, they were already warning the churches to guard against false doctrine, to guard against those who teach all kinds of ridiculous ideas na nakakasama hindi lang sa pag-iisip ng tao, kundi mas lalo pa sa kaluluwa nila. Pastor Danny Villa is an excellent teacher because not only does he know doctrine, he lives the doctrine. At yun nga ang magiging theme ng doctrines service na ito. Hindi lang po tayo matututo ng mga doktrinang kailangan nating panampalatayangan, kundi kailangan nating ipamukay. And so I urge you, my friends, set aside your Saturdays, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., beginning on April the 30th, so that together we can learn the teachings of God's Word, be established in it, and inspired to live it out. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. May I invite everybody to stand? All right. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Can we give the Lord the best clap offering today? Also, can you can you wave at somebody? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day. That we can worship, Lord. I pray that as we sing to you, Lord, may the name of Jesus be glorified today. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Let's do this.
To the setting sun, say, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, oh, sing Sing the second verse again. Sing. From the rising to the setting sun. Sing. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, my soul. Sing praise. Oh, sing praise. Lift your voices. Sing praise, my soul. Sing praise. We sing praise. Oh, sing praise. We sing praise. Sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. Time is love and doers. Yes, love and do forever. Love and do forever. Love and do forever more. worship. We 
sing. supply.
Faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you.
singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. We're singing hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're singing. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or, or authorities, all things have been created through Jesus and for Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Father God, you see our hands lifted up, O oh Lord, to the heavens. For this is a declaration of trust to you, Lord. This is a declaration of faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. We declare, Lord, that Jesus is the Savior and Lord over our lives. Jesus is the head over this church, Lord. And Jesus is the head over this nation, God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give you glory and praise, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Lord, there are things in our lives, Lord, that we feel that we don't have control of. But God, we know that you are in control over these things. You are sovereign over these things. And therefore, right now, Lord, we hand over these worries. We hand over these concerns to you. And Lord, we in turn, oh Lord, we receive faith, Lord, that puts our trust upon the promises of your word. That puts the declaration of our faith, Lord, not by the things that we see, Lord. For we walk, we walk by faith and not by sight, God. And so right now, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, for the people in this church. Lord, I pray, Lord, that may you, Lord, take, take ownership. May you take lordship, O oh Lord God. Let your protection and your blessing, Lord, be upon us, Lord, and our families. In Jesus' name we declare, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, medyo kawai kawai to the left and to the right. And say hello, good to see you here, good to see you here. Oh, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to come together. Let's all be seated. Today is a wonderful day to worship the Lord, no? Every time that the house can come together, we can gather in the house of the Lord. Declaring who Jesus is, is in our midst. It's such a wonderful day. We bless the Lord with our praise and our worship, no? So this is a good day. So many exciting things that are happening in our church, no? This coming Saturday is going to be the beginning of our truth or false, no? 
this is going to be a worship service, a, a doctrine service, no, a teaching service that will be geared towards some of the things that are happening uh, in terms of how faith, how doctrines, how the teachings of the Bible, how, inter how it intersects with our practice intersects with our practical life no so uh, this is going to be coming this saturday from 6 to 7 p.m no this is going to be purely online and so ngayon pa lang, uh, set aside that particular time so that we can bring families and friends there no this uh, this sunday afternoon 2 p.m is going the start of our youth service our on-site service yay so let's bring the teenagers back in the house of the Lord, no? So uh, you can come to our service in the morning, and then you can have a family lunch. And then while you do your grocery or tita time, you can drop off your teenagers here and let them, you know, let's come together to win more teenagers for Jesus, make more teenage disciples for Jesus, build more teenage leaders, no? And reach the nations for Jesus. Amen? Amen and amen. Yay! Today is also an exciting day, no? Because we have several graduations coming up. Uh, it's going to be our evangelism explosion graduation and our habits graduation. Can you show a little bit of our slide? And our, okay? So as we are uh, showing this particular slide, no? So this is going to be our evangelism um, explosion graduates. We have some of you here. And then we have some habits graduate here as well. Uh, as the slides, as, as the video is, on, is playing, can I ask all of the evangelism explosion graduates and habits graduate to stand up? Yeah, to stand up. Yay! We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Okay, these are our EE and habits grads. Even you mga 2020 or 2021 grads, can we ask them to stand as well? And can we pray for you? Can we ask you to come? Even the EE facilitators and the habits teachers, can you also please come with your students para naman hindi sila masyay and you can stand with them. We want everyone to, to be here and we want to acknowledge you. We want to uh, uh, say congratulations for making this pandemic a fruitful one. Diba? Na tuloy-tuloy pa rin, no? Our evangelism explosion is a quick share program will empower us to be able to reach to evangelize so let's all come in the middle no our habits we have habits one two three and four i think tita cynthia you have four certificates for today no four module graduates praise the lord no and even some of our new uh, habit students as well uh, from you know habits one habits two like kanina first time ko na meet si daniel ba daniel mark daniel huh Michael, galing ko talaga sa names. <laughs> I know it's one of those angels. Sige. <laughs> okay, and and some of the uh, habit students, uh, habit teachers. So please come here. We want you to. We want to pray for you. We want to acknowledge you. Uh, we thank you for our habits teachers and our e facilitators. No, tuloy tuloy tayo dyan, No, we have continued to have more EE uh, e -E programs and even habits programs on July. Okay, sige. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father. We lift to you, Lord, our habits graduates. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, uh, for the work that you have done in their lives, oh Lord. Lord, we declare, Lord, that they are able disciples, uh, able disciples, oh Lord God, who will be disciples of the next generation, Lord. Use everything that they have done, oh Lord, in their midst so that they would be able to be here. They would be able to grow, bear, bear fruit, much fruit and fruit that will last. We thank you for the habits teachers, Lord, who have gifted your time, your talents, Lord, and, you know, their testimonies, their stories with you, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would raise up more teachers in this place. And God, we pray for the EE graduates, oh Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that you have stirred up the gift of evangelism, oh Lord, that you use all of the resources, all of the people that we are with, Lord, to become so that each one of us, Lord, will be a salt and a light, Lord, to the world. We thank you, Lord, and we pray, Lord, for more EE graduates and we pray for more fruitfulness in evangelism. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yay! Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you can go back to your seats. We just want to... Later on, congratulations. Ang sabi nila, kong... Ano yun? Congraduation. 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 Alright, later on, uh, there would be houses or rooms of food 
Kasi what is celebration without food, no? And so we will have all of our uh, testimonies and uh, the rest of the graduation program in the rooms upstairs, no? So we'll, we'll do that. How are you this morning? Today's a good day to worship the Lord. And worship and giving is also a form of worship, no? You know, um, I remember the very first time that I uh, uh, made the choice, no? To give my tithes and my offering. Talagang meron talaga siyang kurot sa puso, no? And this made me, this let me know, no? That, uh, that finances really has a hold in our, our lives, no? But when we declare that everything that we have received, all of the blessings, all of the provisions and everything is from the Lord, our expression of worship back to the Lord is by giving our tithes and our offerings, no? So in your seat pockets, you would see envelopes and you will also see prayer request forms, no? And you can write it off. Uh, you can write down your prayer request and you can drop it along with our, 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 our envelope so that we can pray for you. It gets passed on to the pastors, no? Uh, uh, with, with our pastoral care team and we pray for that, no? And even in our tithes and offerings, we use this so that we can have more programs, more activities, more, more um, intentional things so that we can win more people, make the more disciples, build more leaders, and reach more nations for Jesus. Amen Bayan? Sige. So can I invite everyone to stand? And let's declare our tithing prayer. Can we flash it, no? All right. Let's declare this loudly with our voices. Let's lift up our voices. We can lift up our envelopes uh, and give this to the Lord and said, Heavenly Father. Okay, let's all sing together. One, two, three. Heavenly Father, I am a tither. I believe that you are opening the windows of heaven over my life. Heavenly Father, I believe your word. I believe that all the promises of your word will be fulfilled in my life. Heavenly Father, I believe you are my protector, my source, my blessing, and my provider. I am giving today. I pray for your blessing upon my life, my work, my family, and my finances. Thank you, Father, that my future is secure in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we can all give uh, in, in the boxes up front. We also have our online giving, and so we can also continue to do that. Thank you, Lord. All right. So while we're giving, let's watch this uh, missions video. Today is Missions Week, and so let's hear a little bit from our missions department. Blessed Sunday to all of you, Church and Christy Campita. Begins Church Missions Coordinator. Uh, today po is not our Mission Sunday, but last Sunday po. Um, because of the Holy Week and because of the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, tayo po ay nagbigay ng daan para sa ating lahat to have a deeper and more focused reflection of the Holy Week. Uh, bakit po? Dahil napaka-importante nito sa ating pananampalataya at sa ating misyon. Without the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel is incomplete. But uh, the reflection is not the end of the celebration, but rather this is just the beginning. It is just a reminder for all of us that the mission of God continues. And with that, I would like to share with you this short video.
is our three-day visit to our Bungalong Churches from March 25 to 27. Kasama ko po dyan si Pastor Ana Coro, si Pastor Eugene Pasadilla, si Brother Rolly Nunez, at si Brother Noel Bundo. And I hope and pray na makasama ko rin po kayo sa mga susunod nating mga visit sa ating outreaches. And thank you po again sa inyong pagsuporta sa ating mga outreaches at international missions ministries. And I pray na hindi lamang po talaga sa prayer at sa giving ko kayo makasama, uh, makapag-participate, kundi makasama ko po kayo sa pagbisita sa ating mga missions ministries. So may I invite you once again to join me in prayer. Father God, uh, we thank you Lord for the for the works that you have prepared for us. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us the ability, Lord God, to produce wealth and giving us the skills, Lord God, to use, Lord, lahat ito for your kingdom works. Father, we pray that uh, we will continue to be committed, Lord, to support your missions, ministries, and we lift up to you, Lord, our missionaries and our outreaches, Lord. We pray for your protection upon their lives. We pray for your provision at bigit sa lahat, Lord, we pray, Father God, that they will continue, Lord God, to do the mission words, Lord God, that you have put in their hearts. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship team for leading us today to our production team. You know, um, while, while the church is here on earth, we do those three things. We evangelize, we disciple, we worship. The only thing that we will do for eternity, by the way, is worship. Oh, because in heaven, you don't need to evangelize anybody because, well, there's no more evangelism there. There's also no more discipleship there because all of us will be, become uh, in the image of Christ already. But while we're here on earth, we have to keep doing those three things. Evangelize. Disciple and worship. And missions is very much part of each of those components, right? When we evangelize, we are becoming like a missionary and an ambassador to people. But the mission is not complete until they become disciples and disciple makers. And discipleship is not complete without worship. Because worship is the outward expression of our love and gratitude to God. So good morning, to those that are online, to those of you that are here, turn around uh, to someone near you and just wave at them again. And alam ko nakamask tayo, but I'm sure your smile can radiate through the coverings, no? the face coverings. And hopefully, soon, pati yung mask na yan ay pwede na nating uh, ilagay sa optional. Uh, <laughs> di ba? Sa ngayon, kailangan pa rin. Pero for uh, eventually. Now, we have been doing a series on the Gospel of John for the last Three months. This is called the Year of Divine Encounters. So what I'm going to do today is do a quick, like a recap and review of the Gospel of John. So the last three months on our Sundays, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and also on Thursdays, we have been doing this series chapter by chapter. And when I asked the pastors last Tuesday, you know, uh, as we went through this the last three months, give, give some of your insights or even questions. And all of us agreed Three months is not enough to go through the Gospel of John. You know, in fact, it might take you even a year or more to go deeper. But our hope was that at least nakatikim kayo ng kaunti on the Gospel of John so that you will say to yourself, wow, ang sarap nun ah. Uh, gusto kong bumalik sa Gospel of John. Di ba pag may masarap kayong restaurant na napuntahan, ano? gusto nyong balikan. Di ba? So I hope that will inspire you to go deeper in the Gospel of John. Allow me to begin in John chapter 21. This is how the Gospel of John ends. John ends with these two verses. This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. John, of course, is referring to himself. He is the disciple who is writing this down. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. And it's true, right? Think about this, my friends. No? Na Jesus came into earth in what would be the dividing mark of history. That would be like ground zero is the birth of Jesus Christ. One year before he was born, we would refer to it as 1 BC. 
before Christ. So that means 10 years before he was born would be 10 BC. Okay? Now, after he was born, and people make this mistake, and it, don't feel bad if you've made this mistake. I made the same mistake. That 1 AD is after death? No. AD is not after death. It's Anno Domini. It's Latin for in the year of our Lord. So that 1 AD means is one year after he was born, not after he died. Otherwise, if you start counting only after he died, you would have missed like 33 years of human history na hindi counted. So AD is from the moment he was born. So that if Jesus is physically alive today, we would be celebrating his 2022nd birthday. So you get it, no? So, but how long did Jesus live? According to most Bible historians, 33 something years. So he would have started preaching at AD 30 and then he ministered for three years and then he was crucified, resurrected, went back to heaven around 33 AD. Such a short life. Such a short life. And yet, John says, even though it was short, his life on earth, and even though his public ministry is even shorter, three years, not everything he did was written down. Meaning he did so much more in those three years of public ministry than most people have done in their entire lifetime. And so he says, There's, that's just enough time, energy, books to put it down. And this is considering that when John is writing, Matthew, Mark, and Luke had already written their accounts. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are dated around the 60s AD, about 30 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. John, however, writes about in the 80s. So 50 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. So he had time to reflect. He had time to consider what did Matthew, Mark, and Luke already write down and what is still missing from the story. And I love that John is here. Can you imagine no, if our Bibles only had Matthew, Mark, and Luke? Man, where would John 3.16 go? <laughs> where would John chapter 1 verse 1 go? In the beginning was the word. If we did not have the gospel of John, what are we going to... There's so much of the life and the identity of Jesus that would have been missing. And so, even though it was not enough to put everything down, what we have is God's word for us today. Amen. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for these four gospel accounts that have been written down. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And although we have been only been looking at the gospel according to John, Lord, I pray that this will inspire all of us here to go back to the Gospels, to read it again and again and again, just so we can rediscover who Jesus truly is and what Jesus really accomplished on our behalf and what is it that is demanded of us today in response. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. So we ask the question, John, where did you get this story? How did you get it? Well, one is that he was an eyewitness. He was part of the original 12. So everywhere Jesus went, the 12 went. So whenever Jesus would teach and preach, he was there to hear it. And not only that, the three, Peter, James, and John, would be like the inner circle of Jesus. So that even was the nine, yung nine na iba na utosang bumili ng Jollibee, at habang sila'y bumibili ng Jollibee, Yung tatlo, kasama pa rin ni Jesus. So there were additional things that John would have gotten straight out of the mouth of Jesus that the other nine did not get. But beyond that, surely there are things in his account that no human could have told him. No interaction with anyone could have told him. Only by direct revelation from God the Father. An example of that would be chapter 1. Where John writes, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Surely that is not something that anyone that he observed. This was something that God, the Father himself, brought down. But one of the things I love about the Gospel of John in comparison to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. For example, in John, you don't have the Sermon on the Mount. In John, you don't have 
the, the teachings of Jesus about the end times. What's gonna happen before Jesus returns. And John probably was thinking to himself, sinulat na ni Matthew, sinulat na ni Luke, sinulat na ni Mark. Hindi ko na ulitin yun. Alam mo na yun? You know? what, what's missing? What's missing is a lot of these interactions that Jesus had with certain people. What I would call divine encounters. People who encountered Jesus without even knowing they were encountering God in the flesh. And so I want us to just briefly go through some of these characters again. John the Baptist is the first one that shows up in chapter 1, right? As Jesus is about to begin his public ministry, John the Baptist is there baptizing people. Who is John the Baptist again? Second cousin of Jesus. Their mothers were cousins, okay? John the Baptist's mother is Elizabeth. Jesus' mother is Mary. Magpinsan yung dalawa. Therefore, yung mga anak nila, anong tawag doon? Second cousin. All right. Now, even though they are second cousins, and even though in the womb of Mary, when she was pregnant with Jesus, and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, and when Mary and Elizabeth met, according to the Gospel of Luke, the baby in Elizabeth, that's John the Baptist, Leap for joy. Mothers, nakaramdam na makayo nung biglang gubalaw yung, di ba, yung inside, no? Yung baby niyo, oh, oh, sumisipa, sumisipa, you know? May nakita po akong ganitong commercial. I don't know, hanapin na lang ninyo. May mga nganak yung, yung nanay. This is an American commercial. And yung tatay, kumakain ng Doritos. Doon sa delivery room, kumakain ng Doritos. At habang, i, ano to, ultrasound, biglang gumalaw yung baby. Gumalaw. So, nagagalit yung mother no yung nanay yung wife niya na ano ba yan i'm i'm here and you here you are you are eating doritos so she shoves the doritos from the husband and the doritos falls on the ground and then the baby decides to just <laughs> jump out <laughs> to look for the doritos okay <laughs> sorry ah na, na distract ako dahil naalala ko lang bigla Pero wag na ninyong hanapin. Baka ma- mastumble pa kayo. <laughs> so, John the Baptist is going crazy in the womb of his mother. Why? Because Elizabeth says, Hey, my baby knows your baby. And my baby knows your baby. Mary, your baby is the Messiah. Wow. John the Baptist now in the womb recognized that Jesus in the womb is the Messiah. But for the next 30 years, they don't have any interaction at all. In fact, biblical scholars say, John the Baptist at, at a certain age when he was an adult went to the desert and lived among what is a group called the SNEs. And then, from there, from the wilderness, God calls him. So he starts baptizing people. And then out of nowhere, Jesus shows up. And John the Baptist's testimony says, I would not known him, meaning, hindi niya namukhaan, uy, pinsan. Wala, hindi, hindi. I would not ho- known him except the voice from heaven said, this is my son. So, John the Baptist testifies, behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. Wow. And immediately after him, we have Andrew and Philip, two disciples of John, who starts following Jesus. So, sa umpisa pa lang, nawala na agad ang church member si John the Baptist. Eh. <laughs> Hindi pa nakakabuelo, nawala na ng church member. Pumunta na agad kay Jesus. So, Andrew and Philip. But here's the great thing about those two guys, Andrew and Philip. From the very get-go, they started evangelizing. They saw Nathaniel. Nathaniel! Sama ka sa amin. Then Andrew said, sa kuya niya, Simon, Peter, join us. So, as they encounter Jesus along the way, you will have all of these different personalities. Then you have a wedding that happens in chapter 2. Which according to Jesus, uh, sorry, according to John, is the first miracle that Jesus performed. Can you imagine when Jesus shows up in your wedding or in your event, whatever it may be? Di ba, inimbitan nyo lahat, yung iba hindi dumating, but Jesus showed up. Wow. I, 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 when I preached this message, I remember saying this. There were many other weddings happening in that day. But only one wedding decided to invite Jesus. Only one couple decided to invite Jesus. And Jesus performed a miracle. So next time, make sure you invite Jesus, okay? In whatever event it may be, invite Him. Who knows? He might just perform something miraculous 
in your next event. Amen? Then you've got Nicodemus, a powerful personality. Not only was he a Pharisee, in those days, the Sanhedrin is the Supreme Court, Congress, and President rolled into one. The Sanhedrin is the executive, legislative, and judiciary in the nation of Israel. And to Nicodemus, Jesus tells those powerful words that we use whenever we share the gospel. What is that? Unless a person is born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Then fast forward to another chapter, a Samaritan woman. We don't know her name. Really, I don't know why. I wish they, they put a name on her. I really do. But maybe it's so that all of us can find ourselves in her story. You know, a Samaritan woman who has been rejected in society discovers that the Messiah is right there in front of her and then tells her neighbor again. So you see, the encounter with Jesus, ano palagi ang kasunod? Evangelism. She encounters Jesus and what does she say? Yes, Jesus is mine. Akin lang. Wala nang iba. No. She says, I better tell my neighbors. So she brings the entire barangay to meet Jesus and they all get saved. Amazing. Then you've got the paralytic at the pool. One of the most powerful stories as far as I'm concerned. You've got this paralytic. Jesus asks him to me a silly question. A silly question. Pilay. Gusto mong makalakad? Hello? Of course. Kung ako yung tinanong, ganun ang sagot ko kay Jesus. Hello? <laughs> Kailangan pa bang i-memorize yan? Of course. Do you want to walk? Yes. Okay. But ito ang problema ko, you know. There's a rumor that an angel of God comes and stirs up the water, the pool. E bago pa ako makarating doon, e first come, first serve. Bago ako makarating, whoever gets first gets healed. Eh, paano naman ako makakarating eh? Paralitik nga. Okay? And the most powerful thing in that story is this. Jesus does not give validation to that story. Because if the story is true, and if I were Jesus, ito po ang gagawin ko. <laughs> Wala nakakaalam nito ha. Ako lang. I know the exact time when God the Father will send an angel, lumapit na tayo. Diyan ka lang ha, diyan ka lang. At the exact moment, sisipain kita para bumagsa ka dun sa tubig. And mahihil ka talaga. Okay? Because then you'll be the first. <laughs> I mean, sorry ha, that's how crazy I get when I read the scriptures. Alam mo ko ako nandun, ganito gagawin ko. Kaya buti na lang po, I am not the savior of mankind. Dahil magulo ang daigdig pag ko. You know? Instead, Jesus says, just pick up your mat and go home. That's it. Wala nang hukus pokus. Wala nang tubig. Walang anything. He healed him. And then you've got the multitudes. Wow! People were following Jesus from all over the place and not a single person, including the disciples, thought of bringing baon. Except a little boy. Na, thank God for the nanais. Nanais, raise your hand, mommies. Malapit na po ang Mother's Day. For sure, that child would not have thought about that himself. Why? Because tayo mga bata, wala, hindi tayo rin nag-iisip. Eh. We just go. And then we realize, ay, wala akong food. But the nanay probably stopped him at the door you know, and said, Anak, you're not going anywhere without bringing some food. So he did. And guess what? Jesus multiplied the five loaves and the two fish. And then you've got the woman caught in adultery. Wow. At a time when people were just ready to stone her to death, Jesus tells everyone there, any one of you is without sin, go ahead, be the first. And thankfully, none of them did. Buti na lang, wala mga Pinoy nung panahon na yun. Kasi pag may Pinoy doon, mauuna eh. Mm. Sige. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you've got the blind man. Another one of those incredible stories in Scripture. Jesus healed in many different ways. Sometimes he just speaks the word and the person gets healed. Sometimes he touches and the person gets healed. Sometimes it's the person who touches him and they get healed. But in this occasion, Jesus employs a most unusual method that so far, none of your beginning church pastors are willing to replicate yet. 
Thank you, Lord. Wag muna. Okay. Which is to spit on the mud, on the ground. Make mud and put it on the eyes. And, and he gets healed. So, next time you ask for prayer and you approach, and then you hear a sound that's quite unusual. <laughs> ano yung ginagawa ni Pastor? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you feel something in your face. <laughs> Don't worry. We won't do that. Especially in COVID times. That's not allowed. <laughs> okay. And then you've got Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Wow. I always tell people this. The moment you hear someone is in the ICU, drop everything and run. Because you might not reach them alive. Whatever you're doing, go. Because you might not reach them alive. And I've, there's been a few people in my life that you, you know, or I went and then Barbara didn't come with me. And then I tell her, you know, pagkatapos kung umalis, sumangat langit na eh. In fact, there was a season in my ministry Lahat po nang dinala ko sa ICU, sumalangit na wa. Right after. Like a day or so after. Kaya sabi ko to my co-pastors, please don't let me into the ICU anymore. Uh, parang graduation ceremony na yun eh. Pag akong dumar. <laughs> Kaya, please invite the other pastors first. But, what does Jesus do? Wala lang. Dead ma lang. Chillax lang siya. Lazarus is very sick. In fact, this was the message to him. The, the, your friend whom you love is very sick. Kung ikaw yun, di ba? You'll drop everything. You run. Jesus, no, it's okay. For a few days later, uh, he's dead. Okay, now let's go. Why? Because it's a greater miracle, ano? To raise the dead than to simply heal the sick. And then, of course, the 12 disciples. It's an interesting, motley group of individuals that Jesus assembled. If you were, you know, hiring in your company, you probably would not hire any one of them. And so, especially one of them, which is Judas Iscariot. And yet, Jesus includes him. It's amazing, no? How Jesus includes all sorts of people in his circle. These 12 have seen the Lord, have seen his miracles, have heard him teach, and yet, throughout those three years, they would constantly, constantly doubt and express unbelief. And then all the way to the very end where Judas decides to betray him. And then one character that maybe not many of us are familiar with, if I mention his name, you probably say, who? Malchus. Malchus. M-A-L-C-H-U-S. He's the high priest servant whose ear Peter cut off. When Judas betrayed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter had a sword and then he battled with one of them his name is Malchus, and cut off his ear. Now, those of you that are boxing fans, can you remember the Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson fight, right? And Tyson bit off the, the earlobe. And literally, you can see it in the, cam the video, it flies away, you know, yung earlobe. By the way, it was never, I don't think it was ever uh, attached because years later, there was a video of Holyfield and his ear is still like, kulang pa, you know. But think about this. The last known healing of Jesus Christ is this guy. After him, there was no one else who got healed. Wow. And his story appears in all four gospel accounts. Then you've got Caiaphas and Annas, the high priest and the high priest dad, you know, uh, doing a joint tag team against Jesus. Pontius Pilate, who washed his hands of the entire thing. Joseph of Arimathea, who took the body of Jesus and placed it in Joseph's own tomb. Jesus borrowed this tomb. <laughs> Amazing, no? Who borrows a tomb? The one who knows he only needs it for a weekend. Pahiram nga ng libingan mo. Three days ko lang naman kailangan. Pahiram na lang. Nag-Airbnb pa si Jesus, no? And then on the first Easter Sunday, what do we get? Mary Magdalene. There were four women who came there, but the story in the Gospel of John is about Mary Magdalene who sees Jesus, tells the disciples, Peter and John runs to the, to the tomb and finds it. Indeed, it is empty. So all of these fascinating characters. But for all of those characters, the one common denominator is Jesus. It was their encounter with him 
that made their life meaningful, transformed them. Their life was never the same again. And really, if you think about it, all of us here, we all come from different places. We have different backgrounds. We come from different families. We speak different dialects. If you're from the Philippines, from the north all the way to the south, pag hindi tayo mag, minsan magkakaintindihan, we may come from different colleges and different courses, trabaho, everything. We come from different places, different personalities. What do we have in common that we are gathered here today, including those online? It is Jesus. We encountered Him at some point of our life, and our life was never the same again. And so as we go through again, introduction pa lang po yun. <laughs> Let's go back chapter by chapter in the Gospel of John. Chapter 1, we encountered Jesus as the eternal God who became flesh and dwelt among us. And that He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. More than, that's, that's what separates Jesus from all other religious figures is this. He's not only a human that was doing good things and teaching good things. He is none other than God Himself who came to dwell among us. And not only that, unlike other religious figures who teach good things also, by the way, and who would be willing to sacrifice any one of their followers. <laughs> Jesus sacrificed Himself. The only one who was willing to give His own life for the salvation of the world. In chapter 2, we find Jesus as the miracle worker, transforming water into wine at a happy event that could easily have become one of the worst events in society in, back in the day. Because in those days, for you to a couple for, to get married, to invite the entire community, and to run out of food, to run out of wine for people to drink, you won't be able to live that down. Years later, you already have children and grandchildren. People will still be talking about you. Eh, yan yung nagkasikinasal na naubusan ng pagkain. Naubusan ng alak, kakaya. You know? Right? So, Jesus learns of this need. And what does He do? He just instructs the workers there, just, just keep pouring water into those jars and then start serving it. Wow. If you were one of the waiters there, Alam mo namang tubig yun, di ba? Right? Because you're the one who took from the well and filled that jar. And now Jesus tells you, sumalok ka and give it to the guests. I don't know about you, but those waiters had greater faith than any of the disciples because they had to take Jesus at His word. Masisisanti ka nun. You will get fired for offering Water from the well to the guests. So we, ano to? Too big? You know? So papagalitan. Sino papagalitan? The waiters. Instead, they must have said, Lord, trabaho namin na nakasalalay dito. You know? But they, he said it. We gave it. And what was the result? It's the best wine ever. Wow. So the next time the Lord tells you to do something ridiculous, step out in faith. You'll be surprised what God can do. Amen? In John chapter 3, we encounter Jesus as the Son of God. That Jesus says Himself, For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son. That's me, He says. And whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So, He is the Son of God through whom we can receive eternal life through faith. In chapter 4, we encounter Him as the Messiah, the Savior of the world, which is a a very interesting statement because prior to that, the Jews thought that the future Messiah would come to save us, the Jews. After all, we are the people of God. We were chosen, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, all the way here. So, when God sends His anointed one, the Messiah, guess who's He saving? Us. Not you, just us. So when the Samaritans encounter Jesus and declare, you are the Savior of the world. Wow. Kasali pala kami dun. We're not Jews, but kasali pala kami. So tell someone here, you, kasali ka rin. Kasali ka rin. You know? Aren't you glad? Kasali tayo mga Pinoy, you know? Praise the Lord. Around the throne in heaven, there will be Pinoys there. Amen from all of the provinces of the Philippines. Mula apare hanggang holo. 
and pati yung mga islands na pinag-aawayan pa rin. Okay. Kasama tayo doon. Praise God. By the way, isang tampo ko doon sa movie na 2012. I don't know if you remember that movie, 2012. Yung they, they chose people from, from all the nations to put in those floating arcs. Wala kayang Pinoy doon. Ni isa. Hindi tayo kasali. Ayaw nila tayong iligtas. <laughs> Sabi nila, huwag na natin isama yung mga Pinoy, magulo. <laughs> so, <laughs> but thank you Lord, kasama kami. Hallelujah. In chapter 6, we encounter Jesus as the bread of life who fed the multitudes, not just with physical food, but with spiritual food. He would tell later on the people who ate, hey, don't work just for the food that spoils, but rather for the food that comes from heaven that shall never spoil. And that is me, the bread of life. In chapter 7, we encounter Jesus as the light of the world who takes away the darkness of sin. In chapter 8, we encounter Jesus as the compassionate forgiver and redeemer of broken lives. When he redeemed this woman caught in adultery, he really is redeeming all of us. Because all of us have a history that should be canceled by God. Honestly. All of us. No exception. Lahat po tayo. Kung may cancel culture, lahat tayo canceled. By heaven. Because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If thanks be to God, he said, is there anyone here who condemns you? Uh, no, Lord. And neither do I condemn you. But then the second part. Now go and sin no more. Amen? From this moment on, live a changed life. In chapter 9, we encounter Jesus as the sight giver. Both the physically blind and the spiritually blind. In fact, spiritual blindness is a worse condition than physical blindness. Physical blindness will cause you to stumble and fall while here on earth. Spiritual blindness will cause you an eternity away from God. In chapter 10, we encounter Jesus as the good shepherd who knows and cares for his sheep. Well, the shepherd knows you by name. Hallelujah. He knows you by name. Not only that, what does the scripture say? He even knows what? The number of hair you have on your head. With some of us, God finds that easy to do. Isa lang ang Sabi niya, top gun eh. Di ba? The top is gun. Sorry, sorry. Ang dami niyong pabaon, ano? <laughs> in chapter 11, we encounter Jesus as the resurrection in the life. Wow. Where he says, everyone who believes in me, though they were dead, yet shall they live again. Wow. Jesus truly gives life. In chapter 12, we encounter Jesus. And by the way, you can go back to our YouTube channel and watch all of the preachings of all, all of our pastors, the 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and including the Thursday night. That particular chapter, by the way, I encourage you. That was the, 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 the chapter where uh, Pastor Anna and Pastor Josie preached yung 8 at saka yung 10. No? The extravagant love that, that Mary of Bethany gave to Jesus by breaking that alabaster jar and pouring it on Jesus' feet. The perfume just went throughout. How much do you love the Lord? Wow. That right there is the answer. For Mary of Bethany, I'm all in. Walang, wala na akong titipirin dito. This is for the Lord. I'm going all in. Extravagant love. In chapter 13, we encounter Jesus as our humble servant. Think about this. In those days, people wore sandals. And so, it's, it's open. Your feet can get dirty from the dirt, the mud, etc. It's very common in every household, there is a basin of water at the door and KKH. Kanya-kanyang hugas. Okay? If you're entering a rich person's house, they would have a servant who will do that for you. Waiting at the door and will wash your feet. The servant, not the owner of the house. Not the master of the house. The servant. So imagine Jesus and the twelve entering the upper room and they're, they already finished eating and none of them washed their own feet and none of them volunteered to wash, wash 
each other's feet. So Jesus must have been like eating, you know, this is my body, this is my blood. And then he starts looking around. May ingrown pa si Pedro. <laughs> and what does he do? He picks up a basin, takes a towel, starts washing their feet. Including Peter whom he says, you're gonna deny me tonight before the rooster crows. Including Judas who he knew was going to betray him. And what does Jesus say at the end of that story? He says, now that I, your Lord and your Master, has done this for you, now do it for each other. Wow. Foot washing uh, is a ceremony that is not often done, but we've done it a few times. And I urge you, maybe in the next life group, when we have a retreat or whatever, it's one of the most powerful things we can ever do. And it's just the Spirit of God just comes. In chapter 14, we encounter Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, the only one who can bring us to the Father. In chapter 15, we encounter Jesus as the true vine, and we are all what? The branches. Remember that uh, Sunday school song? Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. His banner over me is love. And I said this the other day to someone that we were uh, having a conversation with. He says, branches. Plural. I am the vine. You, plural, are the branches. We're not supposed to be a branch alone. We're supposed to be branches all together. Amen? So, tingnan mo ulit yung malapit sa isin mo. I am your co-branch. Yeah. Uh, ang branch ko sa Las Piñas, ikaw, saan ang branch mo? Okay. <laughs> sa Makati ho, yung branch ko. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Praise God. In chapter 16, we encounter Jesus as the giver of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity who becomes our comforter, our counselor, and our guide. In chapter 17, we encounter Jesus as the great intercessor who prayed this amazing prayer in chapter 17 and according to the writer to the book of Hebrews, is still interceding for us to this day. Do you know Jesus is praying for you? Wow! Amazing, no? That right at the right hand of God the Father, Jesus is still interceding for you so that whatever needs or trials you go through in life, you have this great intercessor in heaven praying for you. In chapter 18, we encounter Jesus as the king of a spiritual kingdom. He was willing to go head to head with earthly kings, both in the political and the religious realm, and telling them, my kingdom is not of this world. And I pray to God that all of us will remember that. On May 9th, exercise your right and duty to vote. Yes, as Filipino citizens, we must do that. But let's not forget, our kingdom is not of this world. And we have a higher loyalty. That is to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? In chapter 19, we encounter Jesus as our crucified Savior who died on the cross for the sins of the world. But it doesn't end there because in chapter 20, we encounter Jesus as our risen Lord. He conquered death in the grave so that none of us need to fear death anymore because all of us know resurrection is coming. And you would think he would have ended there, but he had one more. Probably, you know, John, okay, finished, amen. And then he remembered, ay, teka lang, something's missing. You know? and, I, and I preached this last Thursday, and I said, thank you, that, Lord, that this chapter is here, chapter 21, the restoration of Peter. Because something is missing in the story of Peter. It ends in the Gospels with him denying Jesus three times, broken, depressed, discouraged, Already saying, I'm going back fishing. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done with ministry. That's it. And then book of Acts, Peter is preaching. 3,000 get saved. Something is missing in between. What is that? Jesus brings him back up. And it's a fulfillment of Jesus' own words recorded in Luke where he says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. But after you have come back, meaning you will come back, Peter. I'll restore you. But after you've come back, strengthen the brethren. And that's what he does. We encounter Jesus as the restorer of the fallen. So that if any of us have ever fallen, backslidden, 
and broken by life and by ministry, Jesus can put the pieces back. Amen? Give thanks to God for that. So yun po ang John, chapter 1 to 21. Sana naman wag nyo sabihin, oh, hindi ko na babasahin. Binigay na pala ni Pastor Albert yung summary. No, no. As we have said among the pastors, there's so much there that we have not even been able to get into. But I want to go to chap two more verses and then I'll end with this. Chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. Verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. Wow. So parang John wants to put this at the end and says, you know what? Jesus is so much, all of these different things. But in case you forget all of that, don't forget these two things about Him. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. Messiah is a, is a title about who Jesus is to us. He is our Messiah, right? He's our Savior. Son of God is a title that speaks of his relationship with who? With the Father. He's the Son of God, God the Father. And it's important for us, especially of those among us who serve in any ministry, let's not get hung up on our doing that we forget our being. Amen? Because of course, yes, worship team, production team, ushers, all of the different ministries that we do, let's get involved in that. But don't ever forget, you are first and foremost a child of God. Amen? And when people reject you, hurt you, disappoint you, and say, hey, ayoko na, like Peter, ayoko na. Don't ever forget this. God will never, ever reject you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Before you even did anything for the Lord, God already did everything for you. He gave His Son to die on the cross for your sins. So can we stand right now as our worship team comes? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus to you? Pontius Pilate, when he faced the crowd, he put Jesus and Barabbas in front of both of them. And he said this, according to your custom, I can release one prisoner. I've got two right now. I have Jesus who has not done anything wrong. So Pilate knows he's innocent. And I've got Barabbas who is a thief and a murderer and a rebel. Who do you want me to release to you? And Pilate was so confident that the crowd would ask for Jesus to be released. After all, He's done nothing wrong. And he has performed all of these wonderful things. He's, he's healed the sick. He's fed the multitudes. He's done all of these great things. Pilate was so confident they'll say, release Jesus. Instead, they say, release Barabbas. Pilate could not grasp that. Why? Jesus has done nothing wrong. So he asks again, who do you want me to release? He said, release Barabbas. And then he asked this very important question. What shall I do with Jesus. And the crowd, of course, shouts, crucify Him. That is the question that will be asked of us at the door of heaven. What have you done with Jesus? Did you reject Him, mock Him, disobey Him, rebel against Him, or did you put your faith in Him? Did you trust Him? Did you walk with Him? It's the eternal question more important than any other question in life, who do you get married to? Where do you live? What job or career? All of those wonderful and important issues of life. None of it compares to that one question. What shall I do with Jesus? To those of us that are here, I'm sure all of us already had a, an answer to that question. We put our faith in Him. We received Him into our life. He is our Lord and our Savior. Praise God. So now you have to continue in your walking in obedience to the Lord. But just in case, there might be some who have not done so. I want to offer that opportunity. Those online as well. Before I do, I want to pray first and then we'll sing and then I will do a prayer of invitation. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for the Gospel of John. What an amazing book. So much more there we have not even touched on, Lord. But the parts that we were able to hear and read and study, those parts are so meaningful. It's part now of our spiritual journey. These past three months, divine encounters. Truly, Lord, we have encountered you as we have listened to our pastors preach, as we have read the Bible on our, on our own time, as we have had our own quiet time. We've encountered you, Lord Jesus. And now, Lord, I pray that we will be like the Samaritan woman. We'll be like Andrew and Philip. We'll just tell others about you. So that you can truly be at the very center of our life and of everything that we do. Let's worship the Lord first with a song and then I will close with a prayer receiving Christ into our lives. Go ahead. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be so. sing that song in a while, but would you just bow your heads here in the congregation? But I want to address anyone here and also online. If you have not yet prayed to receive Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord, it's the most important issue of life. What shall I do with Jesus? And I pray that our response will be, I will believe in Him. I will invite Him into my life and I will surrender my life to Him. Those in the congregation, if, if you would like to pray that prayer and you've not prayed that yet in your life, just raise your hand wherever you are standing. We don't want to embarrass you, but just raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I don't think I've ever done that. I've always known about Jesus, but I've never really prayed to receive Jesus. Keep your hands up. There are some upstairs. God bless you. There may be some down here as well. I want to lead you in a prayer, a very simple prayer. And those online, please join us as well. But congregation, join in the prayer as well. As it's our way of affirming and 
joining our faith with those that are praying this for the very first time. So let's pray together and say this out loud and mean it from your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today and I acknowledge I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness and I need your salvation. Today, I heard your word that you love me with an everlasting love and that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins and to rise again to give me hope of everlasting life. So today, I repent of my sins. I receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord and I surrender my life to you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and saving me in Jesus' name. Now allow me to pray. God Almighty, I pray. For anyone who may have prayed that for the first time here in the congregation as well as online, that God Almighty, you will give them now the power of your Holy Spirit to begin living a different, brand new life. A life filled with your goodness and your mercy and your love. And a life filled with the joy that comes from knowing Jesus as our Savior. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands to the Lord? Sing this song as our declaration that as a church, truly Jesus is at the very center. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, God. Can we sing this? From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Come on, sing. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all sing it one about you. Congregation, lift your hands to God. We are beginning church and Jesus is at the very center. Everything we do here. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. as we sing from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all of the last time we sing from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands to God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And now may the grace of God and the fellowship of the Spirit and the love of Jesus be with all of you. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. Those of you online.